Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Astral Tech Media, and thank you for joining us for this Roadcast. Today, we're at Spin Transfer Technologies, where I'm chatting with Tom Sparkman, who's the CEO of Spin Transfer Technologies. Tom, thanks for having us here today. Thanks, pleasure, glad you came. So there's a lot of cool things happening, but first of all, tell us what you do here at Spin Transfer. Uh, no, it's a great question. Um, we build magnetic memory. I know that sounds a little esoteric, but it really is the next generation memory. Uh, we think it's actually gonna start to dominate the entire memory market. So why did the company get founded, and what's the association with Allied Minds? I saw the sign outside. So Allied Minds was a, a, a company set up, actually a venture capital firm, that was to take ideas that came out of the university uh, and give them a commercial uh, way to, to get to market, if you will. Very difficult for someone inside of a university to get to Sand Hill Road to raise 20 or $30 million. And so they set up this firm exactly to go and do that. And our technology, for example, came out of NYU. So MRAM, tell us what it is and why it's important. No, oh, it's, a, it's a really good question. Um, as, uh, as electronics get smaller and smaller, um, we seem to have this, uh, this absolutely insatiable desire for memory. We want more and more and more. And it's getting difficult to get that memory inside these smaller and smaller chips. And in fact, to throw out some numbers, if you get below about 28 nanometer, which you'd call the, the standard node of today, uh, it's almost impossible. And what we have is this next generation technology which can scale there and probably for the next 10 years. And that's really why we were founded, is to, to really unlock this memory for the next generation. And ultimately, what does the product look like? I mean, when we look at where it's gonna go, <clears throat> you know, we look at, we have dim slots, we've got NVMe, you know, fabrics and things like that. What are you producing? Um, so there's two different pieces of what we have, and you've talked about uh, a couple of these words, and one would be uh, an embedded technology. Where we would actually take this memory and we would put it next to your microcontroller core. So that would be one particular way you could do. And the other is your DIMM slots, like you're talking about, which would be a standalone product. Uh, MRAN can do either one. It really doesn't care how you want to deploy that particular technology. Uh, and our idea is we want to do both of those. Um, we're much, much denser than SRAM, the other fast memory that's out there. We're much more reliable than NVM. So if you take a look at both of those, we think in, we can replace both of those particular markets. And we think over time, if you look at say three or four years from now, we can even take a big chunk out of DRAM. Uh, why DRAM? We're lower power. So probably the biggest uh, advantage of our memory is if you don't use it, it's not using power. Zero leakage, if you will, in an off state. Uh, absolutely critical for consumer electronics, these things that go after. Uh, if you wanted to look at uh, you know, doubling the battery life of your cell phone, uh, replacing the memory with no, no leakage memory, be a great first start. So how does, what does MRAM look like compared to something like NAND flash? Uh, no, good question. So NAND flash is uh, a pure silicon uh, solution, if you will. Uh, you're taking and you're actually capturing electrons in one little pocket uh, of memory. It's not a particularly reliable memory. In fact, it's hundreds of thousands of cycles and then it wears out. Mm -hmm. um, ours is practically unlimited. Talk about numbers of, they're big numbers, 10 to the 12th, 10 to the 13th, maybe even 10 to the 14th type cycle. So, and you can use them forever. And that's one of the biggest differences between a NAND flash technology and our, our flash technology is we're much, much, much higher endurance. The second is speed. If you look at flash technology, they're in the hundreds of, uh, of nanoseconds and we're in the tens of nanoseconds. So orders of magnitude difference as far as speed. So if you look at high speed computing or any medium speed application, we win. Now the other problem I hear about NAND flash is <clears> that's susceptible to radiation, like from outer space. Solar rays can mess it up. That's so right. when we look at hardened needs, yes. when we look at uh, spacecraft and things like that, Correct. we need different technology. How, is, how, is, uh, how are you helping with that race? Yeah, it's a great technology. Obviously, someone's a brief you on MRAM. Uh, so we are inherently rad hard. So there is no external cosmic ray that can come in and change the magnetic field. Uh, if you look at what a gamma ray or an alpha particle will come in and do to a traditional memory, it actually goes in there and disrupts those poor little electrons that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. There are no electrons to disrupt in our thing. It's a magnetic field that's pointing up or a magnetic field that's pointing down. Down. completely immune to that. You send it up in space all day long, it's happy. Very good. And where do you actually test and develop your chips? When you're looking at creating all this stuff, where does it happen? So it's a two-step process. Uh, first, we take a regular CMOS wafer. We get those from, uh, from a foundry in Malaysia. And then, if you will, we grow the magnetics piece uh, on top of that. And we actually grow that magnetics piece right next door. Go through that door, turn a corner, and you'll find uh, a fully working uh, magnetic fab. 
maybe we'll take a look at it before we go. That'd be great. You're welcome. Love to see it. Thank you very much for this few minutes to tell us about uh, spin transfer technologies. It's great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you coming. And thank you to our audience for watching this video.